Hey Nerdy Knitter, have you ever wondered how a rectangular bias shawl is knit? There's actually two different ways to knit them and we're going to explore both of them in this video. So by the end of this, you'll be ready to cast on your own bias rectangular shawl. But before we do, I just wanna say, hey, I'm Tanya here at Nerdy Knitting. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a knitwear designer. My goal is to help you become a more confident, adventurous knitter. Now bias shawls can be knit in two different ways. You can cast on all the stitches and then you work paired increases and decreases along the length of the shawl until it's as long as you want to give it that bias shaping and then you bind off. Or the second method is to cast on just a few stitches, work increases at both edges until the depth of the shawl is reached, and then you start working those paired increases and decreases for the length of the shawl until it's as long as you want, and then you start decreasing at both ends. Now I know this sounds a bit confusing because we just went through it very quickly, but I do have a free pattern that you can download to go along with this video. So let's start with that easy bias shawl. An example of this would be Amba O'Brien's Adventurer Scarf and Wrap. It's actually two different sizes. She's got a smaller, narrower scarf and then a larger wrap. Both of them are knit the same way. You cast on for the width that you want, you work those paired increases and decreases for the shape, it gives it that bias shaping, but then in her pattern, she also has this really pretty lace detail going on as well. So you can really see how that bias shaping works. Those central double decreases look like they're running off the edge because they're running at a bias to the shape of the shawl. Now that you understand the basic construction, download that pattern and get some spare yarn and needles and knit a little swatch of me so you can really understand how this works. Look at this little sample swatch. You can see the example of that bias shaping. We've cast on the stitches, but the stitches seem to run off at a bias along the fabric instead of straight up and down. And that's because we worked the increases and decreases at both edges. So you'll start by casting on. Our little sample is casting on just 15 stitches, but you can really cast on as many as you want for as wide as you want your project. And then once you've cast on your stitches, it's time to work the right side rows. Then the right side rows are all worked in the same manner. You knit the first stitch, you work a KFB, and then you knit across to the last five stitches. So in my example here, I'm knitting eight stitches. And then when you get to those last few stitches, you knit two together and then knit three. And that is what we'll do on every single right side row. And on the wrong side rows, you have some choices. You can just knit to the end if you wanna work in garter stitch, if you wanna work in stockinette stitch for the body and then have a few edge stitches like I'm doing with this sample here, I'm going to knit the first three, purl across the next nine, and then knit the last three. and you'll repeat this process for the length of the shawl or the scarf. You will work an increase at the one edge and then a decrease at the other. Now I used a KFB and a knit two together, but you can use any increase and decrease that you want. Then on the wrong side rows, you can work in garter stitch, just knit straight across, or if you want stockinette stitch, leave a few stitches in garter stitch at both edges and then purl across the remaining stitches for a stockinette stitch shawl. And of course, in my sample, I've only got 15 stitches, but you can cast on for as wide as you like your shawl to be, depending on the yarn and the needles that you're using. Now I've worked a few more rows and you can really see that bias shaping beginning to take place. It's running off towards that decrease edge. I worked KFBs at the beginning of the right side rows and I worked knit two togethers at the end of the right side rows. So it's very easy to customize for the width of this shawl. You can cast on more or less stitches depending on how deep you want your shawl to be and then knit as long as you want it to be and then you can just bind off. You can also add interesting stitch patterns. Here's an example of a chart that uses this basic shaping. That blank space in the middle you can use to put in your stitch pattern, whatever things that you'd like to include. Or you can include stripes, different ways to work colors, different textures, combine stockinette and garter stitch and you could make a really unique shawl. Now the second way to knit a bias shawl is very similar but the beginning and the end are changed slightly. If you've ever knit grandma's favorite dishcloth where you cast on a few stitches and increase at both ends until it's as wide as you want and then you start decreasing at both ends to get that shape 
this is worked in the same way along with the one we just discussed where you're working those paired increases and decreases. So you start by casting on a few stitches and you work increases until the shawl depth is reached as deep as you want your shawl to be. And then you switch to that other bias shawl shaping where you work those paired increases and decreases for as long as you want the shawl to be. And then instead of just binding them all off, you start decreasing at both edges to get to that final few stitches. So it's the same shape, just a different way to get there. It can really be fun to work them this way and a fun version of this is the clapotis shawl by Kate Gilbert, which uses really great drop stitch pattern along with this shawl shape. So you get that bias shaping along with that drop stitch design. So now that you understand the basics of this shawl shape, grab some yarn and needles and get that pattern and knit along with me. Now this shawl starts out really simply. You just cast on two stitches. Then the next row, you're going to just knit those two stitches. And then you're going to work a setup row where you knit a stitch, you yarn over and you knit another stitch and that will give us our first increase. So we'll have three stitches on our needle instead of two. And then after that, we're going to follow the same instructions for our increase rows and we're going to work this on every single row. You're going to knit one, yarn over and then knit to the end of the row. And you're going to keep repeating this instruction for every row until the shawl or the scarf is as wide as you want it to be. We're going to work on the length next, but this will give you the depth of, that you want for your scarf or your shawl. So once you've reached that desired width or depth, you'll move on to section two, the length of the shawl. And you're working right side and wrong side rows here. For the right side rows, you'll knit one, yarn over, and then knit three together, and then knit to the end of the row. And on the wrong side rows, you're going to knit one, yarn over, and knit to the end of the row. So you might want to put a marker on the right side of the work so you know which side is the right side, especially if you're working a garter stitch, shawl, or wrap. And then you'll continue working these two rows. Knit one, yarn over, and knit three together on the right side rows. And then knit one, yarn over, on the wrong side rows. Continue that for the length of the shawl. So you are working a decrease at one edge, but you're still working increases at the other. And this will continue that bias shaping. And you can see in my sample here that I've got that knit three together on one edge and the yarn over at the other. And that bias garter fabric is going off towards the decrease. And when it's as long as you want, it's time to move on to the decreasing section. And you're going to work that right side row instruction for every single row now. You'll knit one, You'll yarn over, you'll knit three together, and then knit to the end of the row. And this will start decreasing the stitches at each edge. So you'll work on that final section right down to, till you, until you have five stitches remaining. And when you have just five stitches remaining, you'll work a knit one, knit three together, and then knit one. And then you can just bind off those final few stitches. And those are the basic guidelines for knitting this type of bias, shawl or wrap or scarf. Now you can also add stitch patterns to this shape as well, but it is a little more difficult because of the way you work the beginning and the end. You could use that chart that we showed in the first bias shawl shaping. You just have to adjust it for those beginning and end points as you're working your shawl. So if you haven't downloaded them already, be sure to grab those shawl printables so you can knit a bias shawl for yourself. Now this isn't the only way to knit a rectangular shawl. There's actually seven different ways, including these two. And I look at the, all of them in this video right here. So click through and watch that and learn the other ways you can knit this shawl shape. I'll see you in the next video.